So in this video we're going to cover what's called the endomembrane system, which is a series of organelles in eukaryotic cells whose job it is is to make proteins, modify them, and send them to the right place in the cell. This is going to be a really important conversation for a biology course because we know that proteins do all the chemical jobs um, for cells. So this is going to be really important really in any living organism. Um, it's just that eukaryotic cells only have the organelles to do the extra modifications that prokaryotes can't do. So let's talk about kind of the players first, and then we'll kind of walk through this, the, uh, the story in more detail. Um, we're going to talk about the nucleus, which in this picture is sort of right here um, with the DNA inside. Um, these little dots um, that are hard to see at this um, uh, zoom are the ribosomes that are actually going to build the protein. Then we've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is um, this red structure right outside the nucleus, which we're going to see might modify proteins, um, at least certain types of proteins. And if a protein is going to be modified within the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then it's also going to head to the Golgi apparatus, and it's going to get there via a little transport vesicle. So we're going to see that that plays a role too. And then finally, this body, um, sometimes called the Golgi apparatus, or the Golgi body, is going to be much further further away from the nucleus than the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and that's because it's going to be the last step in the process. So um, we can also think of names for these processes. Um, really we're going to emphasize this fourth step in this video, what happens after translation. And I'm just going to briefly introduce transcription and translation, but ultimately once we cover these steps in more detail in the molecular genetics unit, I'm going to be interested that you can really put all of these pieces together into a, a full story. So um, let's get started. Um, we're going to learn that um, the uh, code for building proteins lies within the DNA um, inside the nucleus. If we were to look at the DNA, we'd see that it looks like this, um, double-stranded um, uh, DNA, and that the code for the proteins actually lies within the nitrogen bases on the inside. So um, the order of, of, the, of the chemicals like guanine, uh, cytosine, adenine, thymine are going to dictate ultimately which amino acids are placed together in what order. So the first step is going to be to actually go in and find the specific gene region. So actually just a little region of the DNA might code for a particular protein. We're going to give that the name of gene later on. Um, and then that, that region will have its DNA code copied into a messenger RNA copy. So that's what the U's um, uh, that you're seeing here. Remember that RNAs have uracil instead of thymine. Okay, so that this process has a name. This is the transcription process. This is rewriting the DNA code into a messenger RNA copy. And that's really the first step, but we'll talk more about how this really happens later. Um, for our purposes, um, we can just think of that messenger RNA as sort of coming out the nucleus, out the nuclear pores. And that's when the ribosomes that are sitting in the cytoplasm have a chance to access the, the code and read them and build the protein correctly. So we're going to zoom way in again. Um, now in this picture, this giant green ribosome here is clamped on to the messenger RNA code and it's reading it in groups of three letters. As we'll see later, three letters corresponds with one amino acid. And um, it, it knows which amino acids to connect together in what order because the code uh, each, each group of three letters codes for a specific amino acid. So the ribosome is actually assembling the primary structure of the protein, and as the polypeptide kind of grows in size, the secondary and tertiary and quaternary, quaternary level interactions also occur, and eventually you got a protein. We're going to call this the translation step in the overall process, and again, we have much more to say about this, and we'll do it in molecular genetics. So what we're really focused on here in this unit is what might happen after that. And the answer is it really depends on what type of protein you're producing and where it's going to end up. Uh, possibility one is that the protein is just really destined to be free floating in the cytoplasm. If that's the case, then a ribosome will really just make it. We call that a free ribosome. And it's just going to make the protein, release it, and there's really nothing further to say about that story. So that's pretty simple. So we're going to focus in um, on the other possibility, which is that maybe that the protein ends up in a membrane, say an organelle membrane or maybe the cell membrane. 
uh, or also if the protein is released from the cell entirely, then we're going to see that it goes through this endomembrane system. We're going to say that the ribosome becomes a bound ribosome. It's going to um, stick to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum and release the protein in there to be modified some more. So let's look at that. Um, that's why the endoplasmic reticulum exists right outside the nucleus where the ribosomes kind of are. So again, let's zoom into that area now. And uh, the picture might look something like this. So again, I want you to imagine that initially the ribosome was building the protein just in the cytoplasm. And it sort of got the message that it's a particular type of protein, a membrane protein or a secreted protein. So it's going to drag the growing protein over to the endoplasmic reticulum dock there, finish building it, release the protein into the endoplasmic reticulum, and then the ribosome becomes free again and re maybe repeats the whole process. So um, what happens to the protein while it's in the endoplasmic reticulum? We're going to be very vague in this introductory course, and we're just going to say modifications happen. There are other enzymes and proteins inside the ER that might chop off amino acids, add other amino acids, and that's really good enough for us. If something goes through the endoplasmic reticulum, then it will certainly then also go to the Golgi apparatus for further modification and really finishing. So how does the um, protein get there? Remember that it can no longer be carried by a ribosome because the ribosome's uh, uh, part in this story is already finished. So it's going to get there via a transport vesicle. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's zoom in on that part of the story now. Um, a transport vesicle is really nothing more than a little piece of membrane that used to be part of an organelle. Um, and maybe when the, the proteins kind of pushed on that part of the membrane, it eventually um, kind of pushed out so much that it just became its own little separate bubble. Um, and when that occurs, um, that's the transport vesicle right there. And as soon as it reaches the Golgi apparatus and fuses with it, kind of the same thing happens in reverse. Um, it releases the proteins into the inner part of the Golgi, and that vesicle just becomes part of the Golgi apparatus now. Now, as it turns out, vesicles aren't just sort of free-floating and liquid towards their destination. They're actually carried to the, the location that they need to go to by a class of proteins called motor proteins, kind of a second class of proteins now. So um, even though a lot of pictures and textbooks make it look like the, the cell is really just kind of like a liquidy bowl of jelly, um, it's much more like a city because there are cytoskeletal fibers kind of connecting all of these different places. And I just want you to imagine motor proteins kind of walking along these tracks, carrying vesicles to where they need to go. All right, so if the uh, protein finally gets to the Golgi apparatus, what happens there? Well, for our purposes, again, we're just going to be kind of vague and say that the Golgi body modifies the protein, um, maybe adding finishing tags that kind of um, um, indicate where it um, eventually goes. So uh, where might that be? Well, it again depends upon where the protein is destined to go. Um, uh, maybe there are tags that kind of uh, ensure that motor proteins carry the vesicle to the um, mitochondria, if it's a mitochondrial protein. Maybe there are vesicles that take it to the cell membrane, and so it becomes embedded in the membrane. Or maybe the protein kind of sits in the inside of a vesicle so that when the vesicle fuses with the cell membrane, it actually gets released. Um, why would you build a protein only to release it outside the cell? Well, we'll see later that, that, that in some cases cells make signal proteins um, and they release the signal so that the signal can go to other cells and communicate with that cell. So in summary, we're just talking about a series of organelles in eukaryotic cells um, that can make proteins, modify them, and get them to the right place.